everybody, welcome back to Royal Blue Effects. In today's video, we're going to go over the uh, final uh, news strategy. This is the before effect, right? Um, I've created the other two, which is the middle and after effect of trading news, right? Let me just kind of iterate that and explain what that means again. So uh, when prices are going bullish like this, okay, what we're trying to do is essentially catch uh, the impulse to the upside or downside of news. Okay, so if price opens up right now here, right here, let's just say at AA30, right, where's the most likely probable area or uh, price, uh, yeah, excuse me, where's the most likely probable area that price is going to go run to, right? And that's the move that we're actually trying to catch. Whether price moves bearish like this, we're going to catch it going bearish, or whether price moves bullish, and we're going to be entering when price runs bullish, okay? So this is called as the um, as the um, the first the very first uh, the before effect essentially it's the before effect news trading right and then we have so this is let's just say this is the before effect when price runs bullish right and then we have what's called the after effect uh, the middle effect excuse me which is really when pri when we have a let's just say a uh, high like this right and then a low and then whatever price does here when news opens it might either fly bullish like this right and we put a buy stop and a sell stop from the low and the high like this and then we are able to um, wait for price to activate our buy stop and or uh, and or our sell stop right um, uh, both of them are equal in terms of uh, you know, making profits from the buy side or sell side, right? So that's the middle effect, and the after effect is once price does take out, uh, when price when price actually does open, with, uh, when the news opens like this and starts flying, right? Let's say going bearish, we catch the after effect, which is base basically supply and demand uh, trading, right? We wait for uh, the actual news to run all the liquidity, whether from the lows or from the highs, and then we take price on a uh, demand or, or supply perspective and then we uh, hold the trade bullish right now I just want to make sure you guys understand that that after price actually opens up and it runs right uh, I want you to understand that price actually is very liquid when news comes out not just during news or while news has just opened I mean but I mean after the news has uh, ran for you know the first like it could be like 5 10 30 minutes that price is still liquid, very liquid. There's so much money in here, uh, it's insane, right? Uh, based on your average move, like let's say each of these, you know, impulsive moves, right? There is liquidity in here. However, there is 10 times or five to 10 more times liquidity in these moves after the news has gone bearish, let's just say for this example, right? Price has gone bearish and then price now is just moving. There's so much money in there. So you want to be where when the banks are trading, right? Or when there's so much liquidity in the markets because uh, you can take advantage of all that, you know, money that's in, in the markets, obviously, right? So that I hope you guys understood the uh, uh, beginning, middle and after, right, uh, of news. But today we're going to talk about the beginning part. How can you take advantage of when price moves to the upside like this quick or to the downside quick, right? So uh, let's go over here. Let's go, uh, let me delete this over here. And we're gonna talk, let's go actually on the news, right? We're gonna go on the calendar. You can see that there's 8.30 right here, right? Uh, this is uh, this is about two days ago, right? On Friday, uh, you wanna be trading Friday, the very first Friday of every month. Um, and there you go. So we're gonna activate this, right? I'm gonna pinpoint what that was at. You can see it was right there. So I'm gonna cut that out, right? right here okay so that is eight o'clock and here's 8 30 so i'm gonna cut that out all right so first things first what do i see and one thing you want to really want to do is really do your analysis uh from a higher time frame structure obviously so far we can see we have a clean break of structure there and we do have a supply zone here that was mitigated right excuse me a demand zone don't mind me don't mind what i just said <laughs> it's a demand zone okay and then we can obviously see here we have a supply zone that price is mitigating right there what you want to do is always mark out supplies and demands and breaks of structures that way you are uh, going to be well organized in terms of knowing where price is going to go next okay so right here we have a chalk we have a boss happening here and I'm doing this all on a 30 minute time frame so that way I can a so I that way can I be, I be able, uh, able to see everything on a higher time frame perspective Okay, obviously you can see uh, breaks the structures here, right? So we have a chalk here, right there. You can see that there's another boss here now, right? Uh, boss there, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, and you can see it right there as well. 
All right, so you can obviously see price has gone, been going bearish for some time and it's been breaking for some time. There's a high possibility, obviously, that pri when price is showing us multiple breaks like this, it, there's a high possibility that price can just start flying bearish, right? Um, now, obviously, I can zoom out and look to see if there's a major supply zone here or maybe it's just a reaction point. Um, however, I'm just uh, simply looking at this right now because the 30 minutes is all I need in terms of uh, price volatility to see where the price uh, volatility is going, right? Because you don't need to be on, you don't necessarily need to be on the four hour or the daily just to see price move. You can see it on the on the 30 minute. Um, and the reason why I say that is because when you go on the uh, sessions like this, you can see how each session here, you can see how each session doesn't move that much, right? This is all London. The green is all London, right? So we know that price is not going to move, you know, above this high or all the way down here to this low, for example. So that's why. Okay, let's go back to this example. Okay, so now that we see supply going up, right? Uh, so, excuse me, supply going bearish. Uh, we see the demand going bullish. I want to mark out where price has been. So there's a flip zone here that I see loud and clear I can already see the price uh, look like it mitigated but it also didn't and the reason why I say it never mitigated is because just because price comes down here and wicks it on the zone it's not necessarily mitigation it's just kind of tap the the high of the zone we need the price the candle to actually come and fall into this uh, demand zone and you can see on the line chart the price actually didn't even really tap so I would exclude this as being an actual uh, mitigation, although it can mitigate, I'm just going to be keeping an eye, an eye on that. We can call this an inducement, but we also call it a PLT. Um, all right, a PLT right there, right? And then now what that I did all my homework here, I'm going to go on the lower time frames because we want to see how price moves here, right? Um, how price has been moving. You can see that there is a chalk here as well. So I do everything on the lower time frames as well. Okay, I copy, I do the same um, thing from the higher time frame to the lower time frame. You need to know where all your um, um, your breaks and uh, you know break of structures are and your supply and demand are zones are right. Okay, once we did this homework here, you can see right over here we have what's called a breaker, right there. That is your breaker supply and demand, right? You can also see, yeah, there you go. Actually, that's that's better. Yeah, that's your breaker, right? So now there's one of two things that can happen here, right? We can see that uh, a lot of us can, uh, a lot of us actually may think this is a demand zone, and I can also treat this as a demand zone. However, I don't believe this is a demand zone based on this wick on the higher time frame because it never really actually mitigated. So um, you can see that price is going bearish, right? So if you ask me right now, where's price going to go? I want to try and catch the next move going um, either bullish or bearish. Now this is where the news starts, right? It is 8.27 and 8.30 a.m. New York time is when news starts to fly. Okay, so I'm going to tell you this. Because I don't think this is a actual demand zone and it's uh, faking it out, a lot of people are actually buying here because they think it's a demand zone, right? But in theory, this can't be a demand zone because nothing actually mitigated, nothing actually touched the zone. So what we're going to do is refer to this uh, right here, actually, this uh, demand zone. Uh, as the, the demand zone that was ne never mitigated, right? So let's continue. Uh, we're going to play it here. I'm going to actually look to sell instead of buy. So I'm going to see right over here. You guys can see that price broke, came to this little demand zone. I'm gonna, I want to want I want to see price going bullish here, or at least come and mitigate this. And I'm going to go sell it off from here. So let's go from here. Supply, right? Maybe if you're on the one minute, since I'm on the three minute, if you're on the one minute, maybe you can just cut this about 50% of the way, right? Cover that area right there. And then look to trade it here. Let's just see what happens here. So this is what the open would look like. I would actually look to target this low at minimum because that's where price is. Now, uh, let's go for it right here. All right, let's see what happens. All right, so price actually taps in. We go in and then there we go, right? That's your first target right there. Now, we just took out this PLT, which is a big sign, right? PLT is, oh, did it tag? Yeah, it tapped it. It just barely swept, right? So we would have targeted this main low right there, right? Boom. So that that is how you catch it, right? Whether you catch it here at the 50, right, or here at the, at the uh, where price actually filled in this zone is up to you, entirely up to you, right? We do this. We could do this, right? Cover the 50 and take in the first, right? Something like that, right? So now we just caught this, right? Now, my other anticipation is to catch price going bullish right and now that we see breaks of structures here you can see there's another flip inside a flip 
right? It's all, uh, you know, in fact, I'm not going to even just cover that flip. I'm just going to cover this like this, right? Something like this. Um, and I can just say that I'm done. I'm, I'm done right there. Right now I can catch the after effect because price opened up price open here and we caught the open, right? Because we were anticipating the price should sell off, not buy from here. Right. And so now this was the before effect. Then the middle effect could have been either here or here, wherever. Actually, let me just show you. Because price didn't move that much uh, on uh, this this uh, Friday's NFP news, um, it, typ it typically does. This is this is very rare to, to be honest. Um, the before would have been somewhere in. Excuse me. The middle effect would have been somewhere in here. Um, let's say price came down, right? So that would have been your high. This would have been your low here, right? So you put a sell stop here or a buy stop here and wait for price to come in tag either the buy stop or sell stop and you're in profit so you would have still been making money on the middle effect as well all right so now this is the after effect i know it i know i said this video is going to be only the uh before effect but uh, let's continue here all right so obviously you don't have to take it the way i'm going to i'm just trying to prove you okay there you go right so price flies right um right and do your risk obviously properly here it swept the lows here no problem. Um, okay, let's continue. Let's see if price is <coughs> going to go bullish here, right? And you're going to only go up to the current high here, or you can go all the way and hold it to this main high. Obviously, as soon as price breaks this high here, we're going to be at break even. So I like to have this here as just as a sign of a break even, something like that. All right, let's see if price runs. There we go, it ran. Break even, right? So now we're at break even. We can put our stop loss above and let's play it to see if price is going to run. There we go. All right, so we're into profit, right? So now this is the whole after effect. All right, that's that's how um, that's how price is done, okay? Uh, let's do another example uh, for the before effect just to go show you guys how this works again. Let's go behind here. Let's go on Friday. All right, we're going to take this. Is this 830 right there? Okay. Oh, it's picking up 8. 30 it's interesting doing some replay here with some students over here um, okay so uh, <laughs> I kind of already done own this analysis anyway okay let's go stay on a 30 minute right and here is what we're looking at so just kind of quickly um, right here you can see there's a supply zone right I mark all my supply and demand zones we see that uh, there was a chalk ha that happened here right there right breaks the structures are going bearish here price ran up the highs boom right we have another break so we have a break here and another break happening here right there's a huge possibility that price can obviously just tap the supply zone and continue bearish however you can see that we had a chalk happening here so this must be a major demand zone which also means that prices should actually in theory run bullish here so um i'm going to want to buy obviously because of the nature of the order flow pushing bullish here. You can see there's a chalk boss, right? Another boss, but then we had actually this boss, uh, excuse me, this low when it was never mitigated, finally was mitigated, price broke. Okay, so what am I expecting here? I'm expecting more buys here, right? So we have another boss happening right there. You can see this demand zone not mitigated just yet, right? And then, like I mentioned, I like to go down on the lower time frames just to kind of get the, the, the beginning of the move. So this is the before effect of news trading. So let's go down on the 30 mi uh, three minute, excuse me. We're gonna go down here and see what is happening. Now, technically, I don't like looking to buy from here because it's it, it, we're, we're in the premium side of things, obviously, right? We just broke this uh, high here. There's a huge an anticipation that price can actually come run the lows right here and, uh, you know, and run the lows, right? So sometimes there are times when price, you can't tell when price is going to do the uh, the before, the before, um, what is it, the before move, right? Uh, before uh, move right here. So what we're looking for is we're either looking to run bullish or bearish here, right? So in, the, in this example, this could also be great for the middle, obviously the middle uh, trading, um, middle news trading we could you can go from the highs or for the lows right something like that there's the high of the candle there's a the low of the candle right and you can do something like this but we're here to talk about the um let's see we're here to talk about the uh beginning uh let's go right here right so you can go buy stop or sell stop right right there okay so let's see what happens uh because this is still moving bullish right we can we can do this there's your break okay we have price coming here 
right there. So we want price to tap this. Okay, you can also, this may be a, a reaction point of some sort. Let's go look all the way back here because we got to know what the buyers and sellers are doing. If I can see it. Yeah, okay. It's most likely a reaction because of how price is moving. So, what do I anticipate? I'm anticipating for prices to come here, tap, and run bullish because we're bullish anyway, and this is the supply zone the price needs to reach, right? So let's see what happens. All right, price just runs. So I would not have been able to catch that. That's okay, but on a uh, buy stop and sell stop perspective, like I mentioned, you would have been able to catch this. There we go, right there and right here, right? So it tapped your buy stop and you would have made profit. And that's the end of the story right there, right, for this one. All right, let's continue again. So obviously this one is not that good. I mean, like nothing's 100% obviously, but I'm just trying to show you guys how I do my proper analysis based on news so that way I can take the next move um, when price comes to my zone. We want price to come to our zones, not chase it, right? Um, so I would not have been able, I would not have been able to chase this, right? I'm not gonna be chasing it, but I will put a buy stop and a sell stop if I wanted that method. And like I mentioned to you guys, I normally wouldn't be trading from up here to do supply and demand because we see supply and demand zones are down here, not up here. Although this is a very small one, that price could still react from here where we were on a three minute right down here. It could have react here and to fly, right? But what I wanna see is when price taps is to come and tap and run, right? Like probably just wick it and then run. And if it, if it comes down on a wick or something, so I would put a buy stop here, or a sell stop, uh, excuse me, a buy stop here, right? On a supply and demand zone perspective, price will tap it and run, right? Um, obviously, I have my uh, my uh, stop loss right here just to make sure that price doesn't uh, go below me, right? And take me out, uh, you know, make me completely negative back here, right? So this is why it's important to, you know, know sort of supply and demand and where you should be buying and where you should be selling. So like I mentioned, I would be buying here most. This would be my high probable entry here, not here. However, I could have taken the chance as well because you just never know sometimes. Price could just wick and then run just like that, right? Um, but like I mentioned, the buy stop, sell stop, so this would have worked just fine as well if you were to uh, wanting to take this, uh, this theory, right, this strategy. Let's do one more here. Uh, let's go down on the calendar we're gonna go to the next month here sixth right 830 let's go here all right so I clearly see it right there okay let's do this all right so quickly just to draw everything out here you can see there's a major supply zone here happening right there right here supply right there you can see the chalk you can see another break here we have liquidity swept above which also tells us that prices can move higher if they want it to right there all right and we know that price wants to come up here as well to the supply zone i'm going to do my uh breaks of structures here you can see the chalk is right there we also have this boss here now right there okay and we also have this little boss right here as well Okay, this is for the smaller time frames, obviously. The, this little uh, boss here is for the smaller time frame. This is for the big one because this is the low to high, low to high. This little uh, retracement is for belongs to this low here. We see that this low broke that high. So this is all good and gravy. Let's go down to the, uh, you know, right, you can see here my supply zones here. My demand zone is right here. Mark this in blue. All right, so all, again, this is just establishing yourself, making sure that you are completely ready uh, for the for the move. Let's go to another three minute because we can start looking to see if we can get into the lower time frames. All right, and then now here we can see we had a break break, price came and swept us low, so we have a chalk actually right there, right there. We have a supply zone mitigated right there. Okay, right there. All right. Now, one of two things can happen here. Uh, what I'm anticipating is the price can actually come up all the way to the supply zone here, to this liquidity, take it and run. Uh, we can also see price run from here and mitigate the supply zone and then continue running bearish. All right. So I have to anticipate both. Um, you can see this was a liquidity break, right? It grabbed liquidity and ran. Obviously, the low never closed below this low based on a line chart. So we can also look to see if prices can rise here. Let's go here. All right. And you can never, you should never be two side minded. You should always be one side minded when you trade this. 
The only time you can be too side-minded is when you're doing the buy stops and sell stop uh, uh, strategy, okay? So here is where the uh, demand zone is. Okay, so I see that we do have a break of structure here, a boss, which is a chalk, right? We swept liquidity from the lows, ran the, uh, ran the internal chalk right here, right? Um, we also are respecting the supply zone. Uh, there isn't actual, let me look at the 30 minute quick, like, because I'm not seeing so I'm seeing something interesting here. Because we have this high here mitigate this high, but it also created liquidity, this is still a valid supply zone. I still see this. That is a valid supply zone. So that's actually what's uh, taking me away from this supply zone, this this one right here. All right, uh, actually, I can just come and do this one right there because that is your buy to sell candle right there, right? Um, so uh, there's two things that can happen here. Price can actually start flying bearish here or price can tap here and continue bullish. Either way, I have to make up my mind as soon as price uh, as soon as price, price opens, right? So let's continue here. Where am I going to be taking this? Uh, since we're on a major supply zone here or a supply zone, I'm going to look to trade away from the supply zone because we are at the... Um, we're at the uh, high here, right? So I'm going to cover this high right there, target the slow here, right? Because we're the major supply zone. So let's see what happens. Um, we have a break of structure there. I can actually see price can also mitigate this here because we already see it on the three minute that price mitigated this supply zone there. So let's see, right? We can also cover, oops, let me just say this. We can cover this high right over here just to make sure, right? Target this low. Let's see what happens. And there you go, guys, right? Boom. So that was the first, uh, the open, right, of price. There we go. I read everything accurately, and I made sure that this is where price was supposed to go based on where, um, based on everything, based on all the um, analysis that we did on the higher time frame to the lower time frame, right? Now, this is what I was telling you about. This is the... Uh, the very first, uh, the before effect, okay? Before effect, middle effect, and after effect. Um, so like this example, you can easily catch a move just like this when news opens, right? And you'd be a millionaire. <laughs> well, that's what we'd hope, right? Um, all right, and of course, as you see how price ran, right? You can be able to take advantage of all this, right? This was just a very, uh, very uh, low, the first low that we were supposed to be targeting, right, for profit, but then you would have been able to Take this and eat, right? So, guys, I hope you guys understand what I was talking to you about here on this video. I know it was a little uh, quick, maybe a little lengthy too, um, but this is how we analyze the markets, and this is how you're able to trade based on news. Now, we have one more uh, news uh, strat. I mean, excuse me. I'm going to talk to you guys about how to trade news on besides the NFP. There's other news every Monday through Friday on um, on uh, you know on news that uh, happens every Monday through Friday. So, I want to show you guys. Uh, how to do that as well um, next uh, in the next couple of days. Okay. Until then, guys, please leave a comment in the, in the section below. Tell me how you guys like this video. If you even, if you even liked it, please throw a, a huge thumbs up on this video. Uh, I love you all. I'll see you in the next.